Hello again everybody. This is Steven. Uh, I'm here again to tell you uh, another review of um, Masters of the Universe Classics. And this time this would be the part one of uh, Skeletor's Evil Warriors uh, review. I'll try and do them in portions in the sense of in groups. So each uh, video would have different Warriors of Skeletor and I will probably do one particular video that covers all the versions of Skeletor that I have. So let's get started with some of these bad guys here. I have pretty much uh, most of them. Uh, let's see. Let's start with the ones that showed up in the Masters of the Universe movie from 1987 uh, with the Dolph Lundgren as He-Man. So what I have, uh, the figure I have here is Blade one of the characters that was specifically made for that movie. He is uh, a bounty hunter who got hired by Skeletor in the movie to practically fight he -Man. So he's a master of blades, as, the name, or as his name would uh, state. He was a master of blades and swords and knives and such. <coughs> he comes decked out in this very nice looking chainmail armor. And uh, he does have a vintage figure that pretty much looks exactly like this and also comes with two swords. Um, however, this figure came with an extra weapon aside from the two swords. It would be this uh, whip and this whip was uh, used in one of the scenes of the movie where he -Man was uh, taken prisoner by Skeletor and his warriors and uh, the whip Blade used this whip to uh, whip him and with it who was in chains and not able to fight back. So that's why, uh, oh, it's a little bit stuck in his hand, but anyway, it almost, it's made of uh, translucent red plastic and it fits perfectly in his uh, right hand. And he also came with these swords and they all should be easier to show you. Uh, just a moment, please. Okay, this is one of the swords, which should closely resemble more or less the sword from the movie. And then this other type of sword, which resembles the same sword that he has as a vintage figure, because as a vintage figure, he has two of the same sword, meaning two of this one. Except the only other difference about this sword compared to the vintage one is that this one is a little bit curved at the end. So it's almost like a hybrid between a sword and a saber, but uh, the vintage one looks exactly like this except the blade is not curved, it's straight. And it's more like a, ra a rapier sword. Rapier sword being the type of uh, sword uh, that has a very sharp point and it was used in Renaissance Europe in 1600s roughly. Because some of these weapons in a way, especially these kinds of swords, some of them resemble the swords from Earth, in a way. Anyhow, uh, going back to Blade here, uh, he did have an appearance in some of the comic books uh, from the 1980s. In the 2000X cartoon series, he never showed up, and he never showed up in the Filmation series either. But uh, he did gain popularity as a pretty interesting character, especially for the fact that he's a bounty hunter and he's uh, very well versed with the uh, sharp bladed weapons. His partner in crime in the movie is Saurod. Saurod is practically, uh, again, a type of a bounty hunter, and his vintage figure looks exactly like this, except the vintage figure had an action feature which the new one does not, and the action feature was that when you press a knob on his back, he would uh, release a small sparkle out of his mouth to resemble his power to release sort of a sparkling fire in the movie and in the comics. Uh, but his design, the way he looks, he looks and resembles a lot an actual Predator from the movies. Something about him reminds me of Predator, especially the facial features as well. Um, I will try and show you a little bit closer up his feature, especially the eyes, reptilian eyes and all that and the mouth area. They strongly resemble uh, the Predator from the original movie or any of the Predator movies anyhow. He is armed with one laser pistol 
and he has an actual gun holster molded in on the side where he can store it. That is uh, the only weapon he came with, so there we go. It's a pretty a nifty looking laser gun. And as I said, it can be stored right on his holster on up against his uh, right leg. So I'll just insert it to show you how... Whoops! not cooperating with me this time but anyway the point is he can just fit it on the holster right here on the right leg but I usually prefer to just simply hold it in his in his hand uh, for uh, for a display anyway uh, he does have a regular articulation for the most part he does have these shoulder uh, pads that are a little bit impeding the movement, not too much, just a little bit impeding the movement of his uh, of his shoulders. But other than that, he has pretty much the same articulation as to be expected. I do believe the head is removable. I never tried, but I believe it is, and the armor is definitely removable. And um, he has a tail at the back that's made of a, a hard rubber, and he also has. Uh, metal armor throughout his body including his legs and covering part of his tail. There is a great uh, attention to detail when it comes to uh, armor itself, uh, the way it was molded and the intricate little details of the armor itself and especially the helmet and the face and he has a, a sort of a semi-metallic ponytail sticking under his helmet as well. This one is not removable. He does have uh, articulation in the waistline, and he does have um, articulation in the uh, up crunch, but that up crunch is only possible to see if you remove the armor, because like this, the armor is impeding the movement of the up crunch. And he does have articulation in the arms and legs, and uh, that's about it as far as he goes, so I'll just show you the two of them side by side. So there we go, that's Blade and Sauron. Next one in our discussion would be Jitsu. He is sort of a, uh, I guess, a Japanese type of uh, warrior who lives on Eternia and he fights for Skeletor. And he's usually portrayed on riding a Night Stalker horse, robotic horse. Uh, he is uh, an opposite of Fisto, Fisto being a warrior for Heman and who has a metallic fist and Jitsu here sort of in a way like an evil version of Fisto with a karate chop golden or bronze uh, fist um, not shaped like a fist but more as I said like a, a chopping hand uh, the vintage figure looks exactly like this and he had the feature that the uh, right arm where the flat hand uh, bronze hand is located was spring loaded so that when you pull it back and release it he, will, he could imitate a, a chopping movement, karate chopping movement. His armor is removable, so is the head. Uh, the head resembles that of a Japanese samurai. Even his sword is uh, like a Japanese katana blade, uh, samurai blade. He does have movements in the legs and arms, uh, and in the waist he does have the up crunch, and he came with some extra weapons that can be stored at the back of the armor, but I usually don't display those weapons um, for the fear of losing them because they're so small so I just try and display him the way he is uh, he did have an appearance in roughly one episode of the vintage cartoon series of filmation uh, the episode was called the diamond ray of disappearance he was there with the Skeletor's invasion forces when they tried to uh, take Castle Grayskull using a diamond that can cause people who look at it to disappear so and he did have a vintage figure as I mentioned that looked exactly like this and he did not have any appearance in the 2000X cartoon series but he did get uh, a staction statue uh, the way he should have looked if he did appear in that cartoon so that would be Jitsu supposedly in the new mini comics that were published with the classics line he was supposed to take over the leadership of the evil warriors when Skeletor uh, went to another galaxy meaning Primus to fight him and there. So anyway that's the story about Jitsu. The next one we have here is Spycore. 
and Spiker is also an evil warrior Skeletor. Uh, the figure looks exactly the same in the Vintage line as well. He did have appearance in the Vintage uh, Filmation cartoon series. He's usually uh, shown to be a character that's in a way similar to Men at Arms in the sense that he is more like a blacksmith who can create all sorts of weaponry for Skeletor. And according to one of the Vintage comics, he created uh, the Terror Claws for Skeletor as well that are shown in uh, one of the figures of Skeletor uh, that's called the Terror Claws of Skeletor. He is using in his fight uh, the mace, the spiked mace that he came with, and also this nifty looking trident that he has as an attachable uh, weapon to his uh, left arm. He also came with a small purple hand that can be replaced instead of this one so that it can show that he actually has a normal hand, and he came with a shorter version of the trident the way it looks when it's not extended. Uh, the armor seems to be removable because he has the little knobs on the side, the head is removable, he has the usual articulation in the legs, arms, waist. Uh, actually the waist is not really moving. Oh yes it is, okay, so there is a movement in the waist and of course there is an up crunch that can only be used when the armor is removed. He did have an appearance in the in the vintage mini comics and the filmation cartoon series, and uh, his body is all covered in spikes, as you can tell. So he's quite a formidable enemy, altogether, all things considered. And uh, that's about it as far as Spike or here goes. Next in line, we have Whiplash. Whiplash comes from a tribe according to the 2000 X series that lives in Subeternian caves, and in his tribe he's the only one who joined Skeletor and practically betrayed his own people, and his people look pretty much exactly like him, just in different sizes. Uh, they're all practically a type of lizard men or so forth, but they are allies with King Randor, except for Whiplash here. Uh, the way he's portrayed in this figure is the same way he looked as a vintage figure, coming also with his uh, classic uh, orange spear which is the same type of spear used by King Rander figure, except uh, King Rander's spear is uh, golden in color. He has articulation in arms, legs, and waist. The head is removable, and uh, the armor is not, because this is part of his body. He does have a tail at the back made of hard plastic that can move left and right. As a vintage figure, he was able to have an action feature that when you with his waist being spring-loaded, when you turn him in the waist, he was able to swing the tail and hit the enemies with it, because that tail was made of soft rubber. But that feature was taken out of this figure, so he does not have it. He also came with an extra weapon that was used by Whiplash in the 2000X cartoon series, which looks more like a futuristic spear, that has a blade uh, and a spear, or a trident on one side, and a sort of a sword attached on the other side but I don't display him with that weapon because I prefer his classic look and he also came with an extra head that shows him the way he looked in the 2000X cartoon series where he played quite a prominent part in most of the episodes uh, again I don't display that head because I really don't like the way that head came out and didn't look very good on his body and it doesn't really match the rest of his body because the body of Whiplash in 2000X cartoon series is way bigger in size and bulkier than this one so, anyway, uh, so that would be the story about Whiplash here. And then the next character we have here, among the evil warriors, is Too Bad, or as he's known, before he was conjoined by Skeletor's magic in the 2000X cartoon series, that there were two separate characters, uh, Tuar and Badra. They were separate, and when they failed to defeat him in that cartoon series, Skeletor got so mad at them that he actually used his magic and permanently joined them as one being. And they were stuck to serve him ever since. But before they, the Skeletor got him, they were actually bounty hunters who would hunt anybody for uh, good money in exchange. They came with their weapons, uh, their classic weapon that, that was packed with them even in the vintage uh, action figure, and then their weapon that was packed with them with their figure from the 2000X toy line, which is this double-headed mace. Because there is two heads, then practically each mace would uh, resemble one of them. 
in a way, uh, that they would be their favorite weapon. But since they got joined, then the mace is joined as well as one. Uh, he is done in such a way to resemble his look from the two, uh, from the vintage line, and he turned out to look pretty good, for that matter. And the armor does not seem to be removable, but the heads are removable, I believe, except I don't really try to remove them because I like them just the way they are. And he is the type of character like Modulo or Multibot due to the fact that he has two heads. So that would be the story about Too Bad. Um, here we also have two characters that are usually, as far as I'm concerned, I like to portray them together. That's Clawful on the right and Webstore on the left. Both of them had appearance in the Filmation cartoon series and both of them appeared in the 2000X cartoon series. Both of them are represented here in their classic look, uh, the way they looked in the vintage line. And uh, both of them got mini statues for the 2000X series instead of the actual action figures. So, um, Webster here is an actual arachne, and he's a humanoid spider. He has his laser rifle as a weapon, just like the vintage line, in the vintage line, and he's wearing his uh, classic armor, which is not removable, but the head is, and he has additional spider legs built into him. He also has the uh, hooked rope that he can use to climb because he's a very good spy who can climb and not be seen by anybody. Clawful here is a crustaceous uh, character, so he's practically a crab, or a humanoid crab. And uh, he came with a shield, and his classic uh, sea mace, and his oversized claw that he uses to fight enemies. The head is removable, and the armor is unremovable. He has the usual articulation to be expected from uh, the classics line, so does the web store as well. And... Uh, Clawful did get his vintage figure that looks exactly like this, except the shield was not part of the old figure. So uh, that would be as far as these two guys go. And that's pretty much it. This would be the end of uh, part one of the discussion of the Skeletor's Warriors. Uh, catch me next time when I'll continue the discussion about, or actually part two of the Skeletor's uh, Evil Warriors. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.